am starting out with a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler from Maker Flow Crafts. What I did was I sanded this down with a 180 grit sanding block and then I wiped it down with 91 or 99% alcohol. I wiped it down with a clean paper towel. Um, you can also use a brand new rag. And then I spray painted it with a flat or matte white spray paint. Now that the spray paint is completely dry, I'm now going to be adding my glitter to my tumbler. All the glitters I'll be using today is going to be from Glitter Heart Co. I will have their website in my description below along with a coupon code for your first purchase at glitterheartco.com. So let me go over the colors before I add them to the tumbler. So the first one's going to be a nice chunky. It's going to be Social Light. It's a nice chunky gold. The next is going to be Beach Break, a nice light blue. The next is obviously my favorite because it's purple. It's going to be very violet. I like that this is kind of a transparent glitter, so it's gonna look really pretty on this tumbler. The next is going to be a pink ballet slipper. And then for my last, it's going to be Carolina. The way that I'm going to be applying my glitter is going to be the epoxy method. So if I sound funny, it's because I have my respirator mask on to protect me from the fumes of the epoxy. I have mixed my epoxy off screen and the amount of epoxy that you need is very, very little, uh, meaning about two milliliters of epoxy or even less. So I mix a little bit. I'm going to be doing a couple tumblers, so that's why I mixed um, probably half of an ounce or so. So what I do is I turn on my cup turner, and then I stick my finger inside of my epoxy. I put some epoxy on my finger and then I just add it to the tumbler like so and I just repeat the process. You want a little bit of epoxy on your tumbler because if you put too much epoxy on your tumbler then the epoxy is going to drown the glitter and it's not going to give it a nice shine. So you want a very thin amount and a good way that I like to explain this is if you've ever sprayed on spray adhesive to add to um, and then add the glitter to it. So you spray adhesive and then you add the glitter. That spray adhesive is so thin and the glitter still sticks to the tumbler. So just think of it like some spray adhesive. You want it very thin because the epoxy is just here to act as an adhesive. That's all we're doing is we're adding it on very, very thin. Just taking your time with it. I'm just dipping my finger into the cup and putting it on the tumbler like so. So I'm going to fast forward until I'm finished applying the epoxy to my tumbler. Now that I have my epoxy on my tumbler, what I like to do is I like to hit it with a heat gun the reason why I do this is so I can get any creases or lines out of the epoxy. If you put a little bit of epoxy on the tumbler, it's going to create some streaking. So whenever you hit it with a heat gun, it kind of loosens up the epoxy and makes it smooth. So I hit it about six inches away, about five to 10 seconds. And the reason for this is because if you add that glitter to this tumbler, that streaking is going to show through the glitter and you're going to be able to see it and it doesn't look as nice as a smooth covered glitter tumbler. And now I'm going to start adding the glitter. The first one is going to be that chunky gold socialite. I always like to transfer my glitter into a Dixie cup just so I can have more control over the glitter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap the glitter on the tumbler. And I'm really not um, overthinking how much to place on this tumbler. So how thick of a line I should have on this tumbler. I'm just tapping it on until I'm satisfied. So I'm holding it about um, seven to eight inches away from the tumbler. And as I get closer to where the next color is gonna go, I kind of move away. So I go down towards the tumbler. As I get closer to where the next color transitions, I'm lifting up the, the cup more. And I just want to make sure I get a lot of glitter on this tumbler at the bottom here. And then I'm going to pat it off. Now this is the only part of the tumbler that's going to be the chunky glitter. So I don't have to worry about too much um, sanding. But if I would have to sand the tumbler, it would be towards the bottom. And now I'm going to go in with this blue, which is the beach break. 
and then hit that. So if you want more on the gold, you can put as much gold as you want. The gold obviously represents the shoreline. So how much of shoreline you want. Another good thing is you can take a pen and kind of mark off sections where I have five glitters. I can mark off five sections and gives me a little guideline of where I'm going to add the colors to the tumbler. And it's also a beach tumbler. So it's not going to look bad if your colors are unproportioned or not proportioned enough, if that makes sense. It doesn't have to be all even colors. So it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, symmetrical or all the color spaces don't have to be the same size as each other. So I'm now going in with the blue and I'm just going to repeat this process and do the same thing. And what I do is I overlap to the gold. So I like that. I like whenever they kind of overlap there. And then the further I get away from the gold, I'm lifting my cup up higher and higher. Like so. Now that the beach break is finished, I'm now going to go in with the purple and I'm wanting to overlap it just a little bit like I did with the gold to have that kind of mixed kind of ombre look. And then once it goes around, I'm going to go back down on the tumbler and create its own color there to make sure it's known that I have that purple on that tumbler. My next color is going to be the ballet slipper, which is that nice pink. It's going to make it look really beachy. And I'm just repeating that process. I'm starting to pour it over that little uh, purple that I have there and just tapping it like I would salt and pepper. So I'm just basically salting my tumbler. And then for the sky, I'm going to go in with my Carolina. It actually has some pieces of gold in here. So I really like how it's going to look. Now, if you notice, this last color is obviously a lot bigger than the other colors. You can make yours like this if you like, or you can make them more proportioned however way you like it. I'm going to try it this way because this is how it ended up. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just how you uh, proportion your tumbler and your glitters. So as I'm getting closer to that pink, I'm going to lift up on this coral and I'm just trying to blend those colors. And then as I get further away, I'm moving towards the tumbler more. And you wanna make sure you get every inch of this tumbler. You wanna make sure there's little to no white peeking through. You don't want that spray paint peeking through this tumbler. And these two colors, the Ballet Slipper and the Carolina from Glitter Heart Co., they're so similar that whenever you put them together, it makes such a smooth transition and it looks really nice whenever you put those two transitions. You can see on the camera that transition is nearly flawless because of the color selection. So also keep that in mind. If you notice this pink and purple, it's a little bit harder of a transition, meaning the line's a little harder because the colors are so different. The Carolina and the Ballet Slipper, the color shades are similar, so that transition is going to be a more natural or ombre transition. And now that I'm finished with the front of the tumbler, I'm now going to do the bottom, which is going to be that gold. So I'm going to pat off my tumbler first. And then I'm going to take the excess, put it inside of my dump cup, and then I'm going to be working on the bottom. So I have that social light here inside this cup. I, what I do is I focus on the edge of the bottom and then it falls right down, just like so. And since this is going to be, this is working with Chunky, I'm going to be pressing down. If you don't want to work with the chunky glitter on the bottom of your tumbler and you want to work with fine gold, uh, Glitter Heart Co. has Goddess Gold. It's a fine gold and it's really pretty. I just wanted some depth to just the bottom of the tumbler. So that's why I chose the social light instead of the Goddess Gold. I'll also be adding the Goddess Gold to my description. So if you do want to use that, uh, just so you can remember. I now have all of the bottom of the tumbler pressed down. That chunky glitter is now pressed to the tumbler. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow my tumbler to dry on the cup turner. I'm going to spin it 
let it dry for about two hours. Once it's done spinning for two hours, I'm going to turn off my cup turner and let it air dry or air cure for another hour or so. So the minimum drying time that I want is at least three hours. This will all vary depending on the brand of epoxy you're using, the temperature of your room, um, and the humidity of your room. So please keep that in mind. So if you are not sure and you're a very, very beginner tumbler creator, I always like to wait five hours before I move on to my next step. So I'll see y'all then. Welcome back everybody. My tumbler is now completely dried. I have had my tumbler spin on the cup turner for about two hours and then I let it air dry or air cure for another hour. So it's been about three hours. Now that the epoxy is completely dried underneath my glitter, I'm now going to take my tumbler outside and I'm going to spray it with my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating. If you do not use this or have this on hand, you don't have to use this. This is just something that I like to use. It just helps lock in that glitter to place. Again, it's an acrylic coating. I will have it in my description below. So when I do that final coat of epoxy, none of that glitter moves. It stays in place and it's locked right in where it is whenever I spray it. So I'm going to take this outside, spray about two to three generous coats of acrylic sealer on it, and then I'm going to let it dry. It takes about 20 minutes to dry and then we'll move on with the next step. My tumbler is now sprayed with my Krylon acrylic coating spray and it has dried for about 10 to 20 minutes. My next step is going to be applying epoxy over this tumbler. I'm going to be applying at least 20 milliliters of epoxy. So that's about 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters of part B. If you wanna add a little bit more, you can. Again, I am working with a 20 ounce skinny stainless steel tumbler. And keep in mind that this is just going to be another um, epoxy coat so this isn't going to be the last coat so I like to add less than more so when I do that final coat I can put that nice thick coat over the decals tumbler and it has been on the cup turner for more than 24 hours so I am finished with this part the epoxy is now cured on the tumbler and what I'm going to do next is add my decal so I created a decal on Cricut Design Space it says salty and I just put it um, put some squares around it. I don't know if you're able to see it or not but you'll be able to see it on the tumbler so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add my decal to my tumbler I'm just going to place it on the coral part up top since that's the biggest spot. Um, I measured it to kind of fit there. I think that's going to look really, really pretty whenever I add my final step of epoxy. My decal has been placed on my tumbler. For my last step, or one of my last steps for this tumbler is going to be adding my epoxy along with some white acrylic paint. So I decided to put my decal on here first and then add the epoxy and white acrylic paint. You can do this the opposite way. So you can add your epoxy, white acrylic paint, and then decal and then epoxy, whichever way you feel comfortable doing this. The acrylic paint that I use is from Walmart. It's the Apple Barrel brand. I just grabbed the matte clear. So this big bottle is a couple dollars from Walmart. And what I'm going to do now is mix my epoxy off camera. I am working with a 20 ounce skinny. So I'm going to be mixing about 30 milliliters of epoxy. So that's 15 milliliters part A and 15 milliliters of part B, totaling 30 milliliters of epoxy. I'm back guys and I have my epoxy mixed. Uh, so I have about 25 milliliters of epoxy inside of my big cup and then I have about 5 milliliters of epoxy in my small cup. The reason for that is because I'm going to be adding the white inside of the small cup. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy the tumbler. So if, if I have more than, um, if I use less than my 25 milliliters, then I'll have more to put inside of my white cup. So I'm just going to be applying the epoxy 
the same way I would any tumbler. I'm making sure I'm covering that decal. Make sure that is locked in nice and sealed so I don't have to come back and re-epoxy that. And I'm wanting to do the entire tumbler, including the bottom. All right, so I had a couple milliliters of epoxy left over, so I added it to my five milliliters, and then I added the acrylic paint like you see on the camera. So I'm going to be stirring this, and you wanna make sure you stir your epoxy and acrylic paint enough where you don't see those little lines. You want one solid consistency. You don't want that multicolor epoxy, and you wanna make sure it has a good flow like so. So you don't want to add too much because then it's going to be all clumpy and if you add too little it's going to be too transparent so for the white you always have to add a little bit more because it is so light usually like if you're using black acrylic paint you add a little less because it's not as transparent now that i have that all ready to go i'm going to be taking my heat gun and i'm going to be applying a little bit of heat to my tumbler to kind of warm the epoxy up So I don't want to do that too much. I just want to add a little bit. And now that I have done that, I'm now going to take my epoxy and I'm just going to kind of make little lines on my tumbler like so. Now this is whenever it's preference for you. You can add as much lines or as little lines as you like on your tumbler. So you can add as much white or as little white and you can carry it up high all the way past the decal or you can carry it below so i'm going to carry mine up until the pink i'm not going to go up on the salty or that coral color and i'm just going to add it just enough where it has a nice accent and you can still uh, be able to see that glitter in the background so this effect is really really cool i like how it's going to blend together and you can see I used a very little amount of epoxy. That's why I only recommend using the five milliliters and I have all of this left over. So what I do now is I just let it kind of spin. And as it's spinning, since the epoxy is a little bit heated up and you do have a lot of epoxy on this tumbler, it's going to kind of separate over time. So give it time. Don't add too much on here because remember, you can always add more. You can't take it away. So once it's finished spinning for about 20 minutes, I'm going to record it again and show you the difference on how much it has changed. Here's my tumbler after about 20 minutes. So you can see how the epoxy and the acrylic paint kind of separated. I really like how this uh, turns out. It gives it a nice complement to the decal. So now whenever this is dry, I'm just going to uh, clean up the inside of my tumbler and then my tumbler is ready to go. Let this spin on the cup turner for about five hours. After five hours, turn off your cup turner. Let it air dry or air cure for another 20 hours or so. So I want at least 24 hours of drying time for this tumbler. And then after I'm going to clean up the inside, if you do need assistance on how to clean the inside of your tumbler, I will be posting a video in my description below to help you along with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.